Hello, my name is Fiona, and I'm a certified teacher and a Praxis coach with Study.com. Are you planning to take the Elementary Education Social Studies test? This is test number 5004. This worked solution set is for the entire Praxis 5004 exam. These practice problems cover the full range of topics that you can expect to see on the exam. United States history, government and citizenship, geography, anthropology and sociology, world history, and economics. Let's review the types of questions you may encounter on the exam. Let's jump right in. Problem number one. The end of the Revolutionary War in 1783 was marked by which of the following events? The signing of the Declaration of Independence, the signing of the Treaty of Paris, the beginning of King Philip's War, or the signing of the Currency Acts. The correct answer here is the signing of the Treaty of Paris. This event officially ended the Revolutionary War by recognizing American independence and setting the boundaries for the new nation. Now, why are the other answers incorrect? They all happened at different times. The Declaration of Independence was signed in 1776, King Philip's War began in 1675, and the Currency Acts were passed in 1764. So these cannot be the correct answer, and it was, in fact, the signing of the Treaty of Paris. Problem number two. How did Andrew Jackson respond to the verdict of the Cherokee Nation v. Georgia and Worcester v. Georgia court cases? He followed the dictate of the court and ended forced removal, though he did continue with voluntary removal. He ignored the ruling that states did not have the power to force Native Americans from their land and continued with forced removal. He claimed the court had acted without due process and demanded they reconsider the verdict, or he had the case overturned and brought a new suit against the Native Americans, claiming they violated the treaties they had signed. The correct answer is he ignored the ruling that states did not have the power to force Native Americans from their land, and he did continue with forced removal. The other options are not correct because Jackson did not demand a reconsideration, he did not overturn the case, and he did not bring a new suit against the Native Americans. Problem number three. Which of the following documents was intended to help people understand the Constitution and why the states should ratify it? The Mayflower Compact, the Bill of Rights, the Federalist Papers, or the Anti-Federalist Papers? The correct answer here is the Federalist Papers. They were written explicitly to explain the Constitution, highlight its benefits, and convince states to ratify it. The other documents are not correct because the Mayflower Compact was an early colonial agreement, the Bill of Rights added amendments to the Constitution, and the Anti-Federalist Papers argued against ratifying the Constitution. So the Federalist Papers is the correct answer here. Problem number four. Which of the following appropriately describes a civic duty? A duty required by local governments, a duty not required by law, a duty required by law, or a duty required of all citizens at birth? The correct answer here is a duty required by law. Civic duty involves responsibilities like obeying laws, paying taxes, and serving on juries, which are all legal requirements. The other options are not correct because civic duty is not just about local governments. It isn't something you're born with. It's required by law for all citizens. Problem number five. A parliamentary government is usually headed by what type of leader? Speaker of the House, Ombudsman, Autarch, or Prime Minister? 
A parliamentary government is headed by a prime minister who is the chief executive and leads the government. So that is the correct answer. The Speaker of the House leads the legislative session, so that is not correct. An ombudsman handles public complaints, so that is not correct. And an autarch is a ruler with absolute power, so that is not the correct answer either. Prime Minister is the correct answer here. Problem number six. How long must a person reside in the United States before becoming a citizen? Three years, two years, five years, or 10 years? A person must reside in the United States for five years before becoming a citizen because that's the legal requirement. The other options are not correct because three years is only for spouses of US citizens and two years and 10 years are not standard residency periods at all for citizenship. So five years is the best answer here. Problem number seven. Based on the graph of average temperatures, which location most likely has the highest latitude? So locations at higher latitudes generally experience colder average temperatures because they get less direct sunlight compared to locations closer to the equator. So on our bar graph, the location with the lowest average temperature bar would most likely be the one at the highest latitude. So let's take a look at it. City C, City A have the highest temperatures on average. So we can eliminate both of those. And looking more closely, City B is also higher than City D. So City D should be the best answer here. By examining the temperatures represented on the bar graph and finding which location consistently shows the lowest average temperatures, we can infer which location is most likely to have the highest latitude. And in this case, it is City D. Problem number eight. Which of the following terms suggests that behaviors and judgments stemming from it are determined by one's own culture or society? Social stratification, cultural relativism, caste system, or social juxtaposition? The correct answer here is cultural relativism. This term suggests that behaviors and judgments are determined by one's own culture or society. The other options are not correct because social stratification refers to social hierarchies. The caste system is the rigid social structure system in India. And social juxtaposition is not a standard sociological term. So it is indeed cultural relativism. Problem number nine, which type of map would be most likely to clearly show the border between Austria and Italy? Physical map, weather map, political map, or economic map? A political map would be most likely to clearly show the border between Austria and Italy because it focuses on boundaries and cities. So it's political map as the correct answer here. A physical map shows natural features like waters and mountains, so that wouldn't help us. A weather map shows climate patterns, so not borders. And an economic map shows resources and economic activities, so that's not correct either. The best answer is definitely political map. Problem number 10. Which of the following are factors that continue to impact the geographical patterns of the United States. Communication methods, including telephones and the internet. Transportation systems, such as railroads and interstate highways. Immigration, or all answer choices are correct. So in this case, all answer choices are correct. This is the correct answer. 
Communication methods like telephones and the internet connect people and businesses across great distances. Transportation systems like railroads and interstate highways make the movement of goods and people so much easier. Immigration brings diverse populations to areas all around the country, which influence culture and economic landscapes. So absolutely all of these are factors that continue to impact geographical patterns of the United States. Problem number 11. Who was one of the first sociologists to discuss the concept of social integration by suggesting there are various types of solidarity among social groups and society? Charles Tilley, Peter Blau, Max Weber, or Emile Durkheim? We can eliminate Charles Tilley as he focused on social movements. Peter Blau is incorrect. His expertise was social exchange theory. Max Weber focused on bureaucracy and social action. So the correct answer is Emile Durkheim. He was one of the first sociologists to discuss the concept of social integration, suggesting various types of solidarity among social groups and society. Problem number 12. Emily bakes bread for a living. She needs a new dress, so she trades bread with a skilled worker for a new dress. Emily exchanging a baguette for a new dress is an example of opportunity cost, incentive, barter system, or capital. Emily exchanging a baguette for a new dress is an example of the barter system because she is directly trading goods without using money. Opportunity cost refers to the loss of potential gain from other alternatives. An incentive is something that motivates behavior. And capital refers to financial assets or resources. So the best answer here is definitely barter system. Problem number 13. Multiple economic institutions exist in the United States, both in the public and private sector. Interest rates are set by private banks, the Internal Revenue Service, the IRS, the stock market, or the Federal Reserve. Interest rates are set by the Federal Reserve because it is the central banking system within the United States and it controls monetary policy. Private banks follow the rates set by the Federal Reserve, so that's not correct. The IRS deals with taxes and the stock market involves buying and selling stocks, not setting interest rates. So Federal Reserve is the correct answer. Problem number 14. Which of the following is one way open trade can benefit a country? It allows one country advantages over others. It allows for a freer exchange of resources across international borders. It eliminates the need to follow production laws, or it prevents companies from producing the same goods within a country. The correct answer is it allows for a freer exchange of resources across international borders. Open trade benefits a country by allowing for a freer exchange of resources across international borders, promoting efficiency and access to a wider range of goods and services. The other options are not correct because open trade doesn't give one country unfair advantages. It doesn't eliminate the need to follow production laws and it doesn't prevent companies from producing similar goods within the same country. I hope that I was able to clarify this full range of topics that you will encounter on the Elementary Education Social Studies exam, Praxis 5004.
Please remember to like and subscribe to this channel so that with study.com's help, you will feel confident and prepared on exam day. Bye for now.